App Archer? App Archer. Why don't we just say camera pupils? That's much more fun. What's up, everyone? I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and in this episode of DIY in 5, we're going to teach you about another of the three pillars of photography, aperture. If you want to learn about the other two pillars, check out our previous video on ISO or subscribe so you're one of the first to check out our next video coming up on shutter speed. Okay, so aperture is the hole in the lens where the light travels to the camera body. The best analogy is that aperture is to a camera what pupils are to our eyes. The more light available, say in daylight, the smaller the pupils get. The less light available, like at night, the larger the pupils become. Opening and closing the aperture, or pupils, will affect how much light makes it to your camera sensor. So how do we change the amount of light getting into the camera? Let's talk aperture size. If you've ever looked directly into a camera lens, you can see a spiral pattern with a hole in the middle. As you change the aperture settings, you'll notice the hole opens at fixed points, or f-stops. To change the aperture on your camera, increase or decrease the f-stops. The unique thing about f-stops is that the lower the number, the more light is let into the camera. So for instance, an f-stop of 2.8 actually lets in way more light than an f-stop of 8. You can see this chart shows some common f-stops and how much light they let in. One of the unexpected benefits of changing the aperture settings is something known as depth of field. You know when you look at some pictures and the subject is in focus but the background is blurry? That effect is called depth of field. Depending on the effect you want, you may want to change your aperture settings. To have a shallow depth of field, meaning your subject is separated from your background, use a lower f-stop, like f2.8. There's lots of photo editing software that mimic this effect, but nothing looks quite as good as the real deal. Now, if you want to have more of the picture in focus, use a higher f-stop, like f8 or higher. The last thing to keep in mind with f-stops and aperture is that not all lenses are created equal. Just because you made the jump from point and shoot to DSLR doesn't mean your camera lens has every f-stop available, especially when using zoom lenses. All lenses have maximum and minimum f-stops they can achieve, and generally speaking, the consumer grade lenses have higher f-stop ratings than professional lenses. The great thing is you can always try out new lenses before you buy them. There are sites like borrowlenses.com, lensrentals.com, and others where you can rent new lenses before putting down hundreds or even thousands of dollars to own them yourself. Now dial in that camera pupil and get to work. Let us know what other photography questions you have in the comments below, and be sure to check out these other great photography videos. My name's Trisha Hirschberger, and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.